Being rich and famous might come with plenty of perks, but it's definitely not all awesome. And definitely not all perky. While the life of an A-lister does include tons of money, lavish vacations in exotic places, private jets, and walking the red carpet at star-studded events, many celebrities also have to deal with extremely obsessed fans, who may be threatening not only their own safety, but oftentimes the safety of their families. Even simple things like going shopping for food can turn into a scary endeavor for celebrities. So at what point does an admirer cross the line from a fan to a stalker? Right now, I'm counting down the top 10 scary celebrity stalker story. Coming in at number 10, we have Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is no stranger to being stalked. Maybe he was even stalked by a stranger. Several years ago, two stalkers planned to castrate and murder him. The uncle and nephew duo Mark Steak and Tanner Ruin were arrested in November 2012. They were acting under the orders of Dana Martin, a convicted murderer and rapist, serving two consecutive life sentences. Martin was apparently freakishly obsessed with the Biebs. He was a believer, but I mean, are you a believer if you want him to die though? Though he loved Justin Bieber, he told reporter Kevin Gray his reasons for having it out for him. He said, it isn't just so people will know who I am, it's because he changed and that made me angry. It gets worse, guys, it gets worse. If Martin wasn't locked up, he explained exactly what he would do to Justin. If I was free, here's what I'd want to do. Put Bieber in a cage, rape him repeatedly, and put it on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that's a good thing that he's behind bars because this is some, some scary stuff. And we are only at number 10, you guys. We've got a long way to go. At number nine, Kendall Jenner. In October of 2018, E! News reported that Kendall Jenner got a restraining order against stalker John Ford. He had trespassed on her property four times in the span of three months. And she was actually at home during one of these trespassing incidents. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time that Kendall had a stalker. In 2016, Siobhan McKenzie harassed Kendall, following her into a driveway and screaming and pounding on her windows. Kendall opened up about the scary incident on an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. She said, he goes, I need to talk to you. And I was like, no, you need to leave. I called one of my friends immediately. I'm sobbing, crying. He's at my window, banging on my window, screaming at me. Mackenzie was eventually found guilty of trespassing, but he was acquitted of the stalking charges, meaning he wasn't found guilty. Next up at number eight, we have Sandra Bullock. In 2018, it was reported that Sandra Bullock's stalker, Joshua James Corbett, ended his life following a police standoff. The same guy was actually arrested before for breaking into Sandra's home, and as a result, already had a restraining order against him. His actions all came to a head when officers were called to the stalker's home over a possible parole violation. According to a source, the suspect barricaded himself at his home when police officers arrived at his residence. Following a police standoff, Corbett took his own life. Although this ended quite tragically for the alleged stalker, who can blame Sandra Bullock for filing a restraining order? As reported by TMZ, a protective order can only be issued if the star has any reason to fear the suspect. I would say that breaking into your home is definitely a reason to fear someone. Yeah. Coming in hot at number seven on this list, we have Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez has had a lot of fame. At one point, she was the most followed person on Instagram. But of course, being that famous, it means you're gonna attract a couple of weirdos. One of her stalkers had gone too far, and in 2012, he claimed he had over 50 conversations with God a day about ending the life of Selena Gomez. But in a weird plot twist, the guy actually saw that what he was doing was wrong and he wanted to be restrained. In fact, he made himself known to Selena Gomez and urged her to get a restraining order against him. I mean, I feel like that's a good thing. He said, I believe that a restraining order should be issued against me to prevent me from trying to contact Selena Gomez. I do not wish to object to the restraining order against me because I know it is the only thing that will make me stay away from Selena. Selena also had a report of another stalker. According to a 2014 report from USA Today, within hours of Selena's stalker's release, sheriff's deputies re-arrested Che Cruz at Gomez's home in Calabasas. Dude, imagine the first thing on your mind after getting released from prison for a crime is to like go and commit that crime again. No self-control, that's scary stuff, man. At number six, we're bringing you Victoria and David Beckham. Even the most famous celebrity marriage doesn't come without its drawbacks. In fact, Victoria and David Beckham have found themselves a victim of stalking on a number of occasions. Since the 90s, when their fame peaked, both stars have been subject to stalking. Remember the kidnap plot in 1999? Four men and one woman were arrested over alleged conspiracy to kidnap Victoria Beckham and her son Brooklyn. The five people were arrested in London and Surrey and detained for offenses of theft and conspiracy to kidnap. Another four were arrested after the fact and were questioned at unnamed police stations. The information that led to their arrest came from news of the world. But fortunately, police intervened and helped, I guess, stop it from happening. There was another kidnap plot in 2002 against Posh Spice and her son. We are at the halfway point now. At number five, we have Jennifer Aniston. It's not necessarily surprising that Jennifer Aniston has a stalker. 
or had a stalker. She's one of the biggest Hollywood celebrities there are. The bigger you are, the more vulnerable you are to stalking. But this scary stalker story is, uh, I mean, you would never expect this to happen, honestly. Back in 2010, a man with a history of criminal stalking and violence spent over a week attempting to find Jennifer Aniston. He even told the police that he was in a relationship with her. I don't think Jen would agree with that. Not long after, he was arrested after carving the words, I love Jennifer Aniston, into his own car. Following his arrest, he was placed on a 5150 psychiatric hold. He was also ordered to stay away from Jennifer Aniston. At number four on this list, we have Jennifer Lopez. In August of 2013, Jennifer Lopez had an uninvited guest stay in her home. John Dubuis, a former fireman, reportedly broke into JLo's estate in the Hamptons and stayed there for six days. Six freaking days! He went unfound for almost a week until he was spotted by Jennifer Lopez's security guards. The 49-year-old man already had a protective order against him. That didn't really stop him from entering Jennifer Lopez's home and making himself comfy. I'm not really sure what he was what he was doing. He even claimed at one point that he was her husband. He also told the police that he was the father of her children. That was the reason he told police for staying in the house. He claimed Jennifer Lopez had allowed him to remain in the house because they were together romantically with children. When he was identified by one of their employees, he was taken in for psychiatric evaluation. All right, we're getting to the top three. At number three on this list, we have Taylor Swift. Taylor's had a couple of stalkers. One of them happened back in May of 2013. 22-year-old Lucas Vorstevelde was arrested for stalking Taylor Swift and making a round trip swim only a mile away from the singer's private beach to her home. The other stalking case took place in 2017 and the guy thankfully got arrested and charged. After threatening to hurt Taylor Swift and her family, Frank Andrew Hoover was sentenced to 10 years probation. Apparently, Taylor Swift already had a restraining order against him for stalking. As well as the 10 years probation, Hoover is gonna be monitored by GPS. This is to ensure that the authorities know his whereabouts at all times. So he can't go near Taylor Swift without them knowing. But wait, there's more. Back in 2016, Muhammad Jafar reportedly began stalking Taylor Swift, appearing at her building multiple times. He even went so far as to make it onto her roof and he buzzed her door nonstop. As if that's not creepy enough, in April of 2018, a masked man identified as Julius Sandrock reportedly traveled over 1,000 miles to stalk her at her LA mansion. According to The Guardian, he was found to have ammunition, a knife, rope, and gloves in his car at the time of his arrest. Uh -huh. Scary, man. Getting scary, getting uncomfortable. But we're not done yet. At number two on this list, we have Ashley Tisdale. When someone sends you no less than 18,000 delusional tweets, I feel like you would want a restraining order against that person. 18,000 is a bit much. We'll, like, we'll cap it off at 16,000. Apparently 18,000 tweets was too much for Ashley Tisdale. But that's how many tweets Nicholas Fiore sent her, most of which were described as dangerous and delusional. She felt like the harassment was putting her in danger, which is why she filed a restraining order against him. Fiore had been harassing her since 2012, and he's violated that restraining order more than once. On top of that, he allegedly appeared at her house twice, one time disguised as a delivery man. Makes you not want to order anything from Amazon if you didn't want to do that already. And the moment you have all been waiting for at number one on this list, Goop Queen Gwyneth Paltrow. This one's terrifying not only because of the length of time that the stalker stalked her, but also the end result. A man previously convicted of stalking Gwyneth Paltrow was said to have done it for almost 20 years. Imagine that, having a stalker for 20 friggin' years. Dante Michael Sue was arrested in 2016 of sending Paltrow 66 letters and packages between the years 2009 and 2015, according to the Los Angeles Times. Prosecutors claim that some of the packages contained pornography and that Sue talked about marrying her in some of the letters, also according to the Los Angeles Times. Sue was previously found not guilty in 2000 as a part of a separate case involving claims that he'd sent Paltrow pornography and sex toys. He attributed his behavior to insanity and a judge sentenced him to treatment at a mental facility but he was arrested again in 2015, where he sent Paltrow letters again. Gwyneth Paltrow called the ordeal a very long and traumatic process. She said that the experience left her feeling very upset. In response, Sue told the jury that he wrote to Gwyneth Paltrow after his earlier conviction in an attempt to earn her forgiveness and to let her know that he was still interested in marrying her. You know, if you're not too afraid of me. But the scariest thing is a jury eventually found him not guilty of attempted stalking. How this guy did not end up in jail is astonishing. He stalked her for 17 years, dude. That's 17 years too long, man. That's like, that's like the life 
span of half the people watching right now. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, Billie Eilish has just officially obtained a restraining order against a man that has been a huge problem in her life for a little while now. So recently, Billie Eilish had to seek a court-ordered restraining order against a guy named John Hurl, who apparently has been harassing and even threatening Billie from outside of her home in Los Angeles. Within the documents filed, Billie says that the man has been camped out at a school right across the street from her house since the start of the summer. Plus, he has been constantly flooding her mailbox with threatening and very disturbing letters. Those documents include 13 photos that show these wild notes left from this stalker. They're all crumpled up and he refers to himself as Lucifer and Satan a couple times and he also constantly threatens Billy directly which is just absolutely terrifying. In one of the notes he says, you can't get what you want unless what you want is to die for me. You will know that soon the water will rise and you might very well die. You will die. Billy also goes on to claim that this man watches her enter and exit her home and will always either say something to her or at least make a gesture. One time even included a throat slitting move, which is, again, very unsettling. Now, of course, this has to be making Billy extremely anxious every time that she arrives home now, having to worry about the safety of herself and her family. So law enforcement officials told TMZ that this case was going to be investigated by the LAPD, but an arrest has not been made. That being said, Billy was able to have a judge force her to stay at least 200 yards away from her and her parents at all times. So the second that he comes within that range, he would be arrested immediately. But I suppose another investigation into getting him arrested for those very threatening letters is definitely needed. I mean, he did write his actual name on the sheet several times, but you never know if foul play could be at hand. It's stuff like this, though, that really makes celebrities want to leave California. There's just not as many crazy people like this in other states, you know? I mean, a stalker will follow people, but in Los Angeles, it's so much easier for a celebrity stalker to just post up in a wealthy neighborhood and then boom, they'll eventually run into a celebrity. Hopefully though, this all gets sorted out and her and her family can finally find some peace. Gabby Hanna has taken to Twitter to beg her stalker to leave her alone. Apparently this stalker has been making her life really hard because Gabby is actually afraid to engage with her fans because she doesn't know if maybe they could be the stalker. She doesn't know who the stalker is right now. All right, it seems like Gabby Hanna has been driven to the point where she's desperate to get her stalker to leave her alone because she's posted about it on social media. That kind of thing worries me because like one of the worst things that you can do is engage with a stalker. They crave attention from you and going on social media and blasting them kind of gives them the attention they crave, if not more attention than they wanted, might even provoke them more. But hey, she's clearly at the end of her ropes. And hopefully what Gabby Hanna posted to Twitter does help the situation. In a series of tweets, Gabby Hanna posted this. The worst part about having a stalker is the paranoia. It makes it harder to engage with fans because you never know if it's the person that hurt you behind the keyboard. You can block them time and time again, but they'll find a way. They always find a f***ing way. This is me pleading with you knowing you're reading this. Please, please leave me alone. Leave my friends, family, and fans alone. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what you're looking for or waiting for. Please let me live in peace. That was pretty much all she said. She didn't go into detail about what this stalker was doing or how serious it's gotten. Back in 2015 though, Gabby did a video on her channel where she revealed that she had a stalker. In December of 2014, this stalker texted Gabby's phone number and pretended to be her best friend with a temporary phone while hers was being fixed. They talked about a lot of things before the stalker started asking her very strange and personal questions. The questions then started getting sexual and they told her to make an adult account on Vine and send them the videos. This was the point where Gabby kind of knew that something was up. I don't know about your friends, but most of them aren't harassing me and telling me to post nude videos online. So Gabby texted her friend on her old number, which was really her friend's real number, and found out that the person texting her was a total stranger. Or maybe there's another explanation. No one knows if the stalker Gabby Hanna is talking about is the same stalker from this 2015 video. My guess is she probably has a couple. Gabby Hanna has faced a lot of negativity this year. Her former friend Jessie Smiled came forward with a bunch of problematic allegations about her, and it completely changed everyone's perspective of Gabby Hanna, who was pretty much on her way to the top before all the allegations surfaced. Whether the backlash is warranted or not is another story, but what that negativity opens you up to is a whole kind of wave of new people. These people are watching your every move and trying anything to bring you down. It's almost like some people can smell the weakness on you and they move to attack. Another really freaky possibility is that the stalker could actually be someone that knows Gabby personally. It could be someone within her inner circle. It would definitely explain how they were able to get Gabby's personal phone number. Unfortunately, that's part of the reality of being in the public eye 
and I guess being popular online. Sometimes the people that want to see you fall the most are actually the people that are the most close to you. And it's a scary thing to think about, but that's the truth. Anyways, guys, our hearts go out to Gabby Hanna and we hope that the stalker leaves her alone. <laughs> hey, you, leave her alone. Talking to you, stalker. Demi Lovato and her ex-fiance, Max Eric. Their whole relationship has been quite messy as they appear to be head over heels for one another. Then there were claims that Max was just with Demi for the clout, they got engaged, they just recently split up. And now Demi has contacted her lawyers about a potential restraining order, or so it seems. According to E! News, Demi has had enough of Max's attempts to apologize and win her back on social media, as he's been doing for the last little while. Usually in the form of an Instagram story or a tweet, and more recently, there were photos of Max sulking alone at the beach where he proposed to Demi. Either way, it seems Demi isn't buying it, nor does she have much interest, and according to a source close to her, she is having all sorts of issues with Max not leaving her alone. He has been trying to get into contact with her family and friends and they have all blocked him. She's in contact with lawyers now on what to do. Max, who is an actor turned musician, has been called out numerous times for using Demi and her name to help grow his own brand. Although at the time of this recording, he's still claiming he wants her back and is thanking all the love and support he's received during this tough time. He also just released a song called Afraid, which is all about being afraid of falling in love again. So I mean, I don't know, it seems a little convenient, but also it seems like something Taylor Swift does. So who am I to really judge? Either way, the source continued by telling E, I quote, Demi wants no contact with Max at this point. She is completely embarrassed at the way he's been acting and putting their relationship on blast via social media. She wants nothing to do with him. Now personally, me guys, I'm a sucker for love, but I also think some things should be kept private and if Max really is this upset, just take your time and live with your emotions, brother, because it really does look like a clout chasing kind of thing. And even if it's not, you gotta just stay off the socials because it'll only make matters worse regardless. Like even if you are genuinely hurting, people don't believe it. So they're just gonna add fuel to the fire of your emotional, you know, heartache. So just take a step back. If you're really hurting though, man, I feel you. I wish you the best, brother. Get over that quick and plenty of fish in the sea. You'll find someone else just as great. The LAPD was called to Logan Paul's home at the beginning of the week because Logan Paul has been targeted by stalkers who broke into his Encino mansion. It seems like the Paul brothers are always getting into trouble with the police, but this time a Paul brother was actually the victim of a crime. The location of Logan Paul's house is definitely not a secret. His address has been leaked online by numerous sources. Both he and Jake experience regular fan visits from kids who wait outside for hours to meet their favorite YouTubers. But living in a place where everyone knows where you are definitely has some downsides, especially if you're a famous YouTuber. And YouTube being the strange, wonderful world that it is definitely attracts some weirdos. Police car as well as a police helicopter ended up at Logan Paul's home shortly after 10 p.m. on Monday night because it seems he was the victim of a break-in. His security jumped two supposed stalkers who scaled the wall of his mansion and jumped over the fence. They also vandalized an SUV with white spray paint. They wrote messages like vlog, YouTube, and Paul FP. An interesting twist the SUV didn't belong to Logan, despite what numerous reports about the incident said. The stalker vandalized his own SUV, which crashed into the gutter outside Logan's house and was later towed. Which is like, a little weird, not gonna lie. Why, why did you vandalize your own SUV, bro? So apparently the unwanted fan asked security if they could meet Logan. They were denied and asked to leave the property, but they refused. That was when things got a little bit aggressive and the fan put his hands on security which is when they called the police. Logan was meanwhile watching from a window. Law enforcement clarified that this was not a fight. Logan's security held both people, one of which was an underage girl who was later released into the custody of her parents. One of the stalkers has been arrested for misdemeanor battery. This actually isn't the first time that Logan's had to deal with a fan breaking into his house. Back in February, a trespasser broke into Logan's home and was found taking a nap in his lounge. Apparently Logan was out that night with some friends and when he came home, he found a random dude sitting on his couch just like casually using his mobile phone charger. The fan knew where Logan lived and wanted to meet him. Logan was then forced to make a citizen's arrest. 